So let's suppose you're in a meeting and somebody's got to step up to build an Excel formula. How would you go about doing that? Well, I know a lot of people, and this is something I used to do myself, the very first thing they do is double click on a cell, double click on a cell and then start typing. This is our first tip. You don't need to do that. To get started with a formula, use the arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate to a cell and then it's simple. Just hit the equals key no double clicking we don't need to do that it's more efficient we're already in formula editing mode this is tip number one no double clicking what about this error in excel formulae have you ever seen this error the name error that's that's excel telling us that the formula we're trying to access excel doesn't understand what we're trying to do in terms of the formula so we can avoid that by hitting equals here and then vl because i want vlookup and then using the tab key on the Windows PC, using the tab key to auto-populate the formula. Not only have we auto-populated the formula, Excel has also opened the bracket for us and suddenly we're ready to put the formula in. Yes, tips one and two, we're gonna get you building Excel for me like a pro. Many more tips to come in this video, but have you already downloaded my Excel cheat sheet? If not, why not? In the Excel cheat sheet, it's a one-page downloadable PDF I give you the 21 formulae, 13 Excel techniques that you need to know. It's going to simplify your Excel practice. And it currently comes with two videos never released on YouTube about my Excel secret weapons. The link is in the description below this video. I will see you there. Let's get on to tip number three. So when you get into a real tangle building formulae, do you know you can use the escape key? The escape key just gets us out of formula tangles. So suppose we've got our VLOOKUP formula. We start building it. I'm just going to go ahead, reference a few cells here, maybe go across to another sheet and we just get into a mess. You know, this always happens when you're building formally and then you just want to exit the formula. That's all you want to do. You can do that on the Windows PC. You just hit the escape key and we are out of formula editing mode. We can dust ourselves off now and have another go. So use the escape key to quickly exit for formula editing mode when you're in a tangle. What about using the F2 key to switch between formula editing and cell navigation. It took me years. It took me years to work this one out, but let's see what we mean. So let's go back to our VLOOKUP formula here. I'm going to hit the tab key. Now, by default, we are in what I would call cell referencing mode. So just hit the keys on the keyboard now, and you can see by default, we're going to go and reference some cells. That's really useful when we're formula building. You can just use the arrows to reference cells. But what if we didn't want to do that? We actually wanted to move up and down the formula, move up and down the formula as I'm doing now at the top of the formula editing bar. Well, using the F2 key allows us to do that. I'm currently in that mode. I'm going to hit the F2 key. I'm now in cell referencing mode. I can go and select the cells. Going to hit the F2 key again now and just look at the top in the formula editing bar. I can now move up and down the formula, hit comma again and F2, and I'm now in cell referencing mode. So we can use the F2 key in that way to switch between cell referencing and formula editing mode. How about that? Tip number five, appreciate that colors should help. So let's go ahead, build our VLOOKUP formula now. Tab key, we want to look up Luna's name, comma, and note how Excel has emboldened, it's made bold. The next part of the formula, it's telling us what it wants next, a table array. Going to use the arrow keys here, control shift right, control shift down comma again excel is asking for the next bit col index number is now bold we don't want column number one we want column number two putting a two in there then comma again and zero is for exact match and just take the time just take the time now to understand how excel uses color to help yes excel does try to help us here we can see the table array highlighted in this dark red then on the spreadsheet as well the table array highlighted in dark red and the same for the lookup value here so excel uses color to help us in formula building we can see we managed to get our vlookup formula working there i can hit the f2 key now to enter formula editing mode and i can visually check those references using the colors tip number six use the comma trick when building formula across sheets do you have problems building formulae across sheets? Really tricky thing to do. Using the comma key properly can really help. Let me show you what, uh, what I mean. So on the shares sheet, we've got this table again. So we're going to suppose we want to do the same thing, but this time build the formula across sheets. So I'm going to get my lookup value as usual. 
Now be very intentional about using the comma key and understanding what Excel is wanting next. I'm going to hit comma now. You can see Excel is now wanting the table array. So I can go ahead, click on the share sheet. I'm going to select the table here. I could do this with the keyboard, doing it with the mouse today. Now the critical mistake people make is now they switch back to the data sheet. Can you see what's happened to the formula? You see that reference. Excel has switched that reference back to the current sheet not what we want. So we're going to go back to the shared sheet. You've got to be very intentional about hitting the comma key. Hit the comma key here. Excel's now asking for the column index number, the next part of the formula. We can go ahead, complete the formula here, and suddenly we've got a formula that's referencing another sheet, working across sheets, all because we were very steady, systematic, and intentional about using that comma key. What about using two windows? If you're really struggling building formula across sheets, did you know you can use two windows to do this? So I'm up for some torture today. We're going to build it again. Let's go to view at the top and then new window. And you can see 10 formula building tips and then a two after it. And that two, uh, Excel is saying this is the second window for this file. I'm going to go windows key and right arrow. And then on the other window here, windows key and left arrow. And you can see I've got two views of the same file here. The second view I'm going to put on the share sheet, and we can use these two windows to help us build formally across sheets. Let's check it out. Let's see if we can do it. So VLOOKUP tab, I want to look up this value, comma, being intentional about those commas, table array. So I can now go to my other window and select the table. How about that? You could even do that using keyboard shortcuts if you wanted to do. And now what do we need to remember to do? The comma, the comma, and Excel is now asking for the column uh, index number two and zero, and then close the bracket there. And once again, we've got our VLOOKUP formula working there. Let's just prove it by selecting Biff here, and I can see Biff, Biff's value going in there. So we can use two windows to simplify formula building across sheets. Also really useful when you're using VBA code to have the VBA uh, uh, editor open as well. Named ranges can really help. So if you're really struggling building formally across sheets, put in a named range. So this is the range we're trying to reference. It's on a different sheet. I'm going to go Alt M N on the Windows PC to get me to the name manager. I've selected the range. Or you can go to Formulas, Name Manager, and then New. And we're going to give this range a name. We can then easily reference this name. It simplifies formula building. What are we going to call it? An informative name. I'm going to call it share table. The reference is OK. So I can hit OK now. Close the name manager. I can see it there. And then I'm going to go back to the data sheet. We're going to build this formula one more time. Repetition. Repetition is so important. Excel is just a skill. Gets better with repetition. Look up value here. Comma. Excel is asking for the next part of the formula. Table array. So now we can just type in that name that we gave to the two the data, the range, I've called it share table, clicking, uh, double clicking here. That name has gone into the formula, comma again. We know it's the second column and then it's zero for exact match as usual. So named range can really simplify things. Alt M N on the Windows PC and you can see the names in the file. You can even go to the to the name box in the top left and you'll be able to see our range there. Clicking on it takes us there. So using absolute references as well. So I'm going to just copy this, drag this formula across. So we've got our percentages in. Now we need to know how much are we paying Luna, Biff and Betty by multiplying the total payouts by the percentages here. You might say to me, Chris, that's easy. Simple arithmetic formula. And I hit the equals key first when I do a formula. Fantastic stuff. Navigate to this cell. Asterisk for multipl multiplication Excel. Navigate to this cell. That's how easy it is. Just a few keyboard clicks there, hit enter, and we've got our formula in. Hmm. Works for one cell. What if we click and drag this formula across? Whoa, 338. Betty, she's the black Labrador next door. She is not going to be happy with 338. So what's happened there? Well, let's hit the F2 key, and that's going to take us into formula editing mode. And visually, we can see using the colors what the formula is doing. The formula is moving across. So what are we missing here? We want to fix these references, don't we? We want to fix these references. How do we do that? Well, have you seen the dollar signs? 
I know you've seen formerly in Excel with the dollar signs. Perhaps you're already using absolute references. If you are, I've got another tip coming up in a second that's going to challenge you and push your practice even further forward. What we want to do is, as we copy this formula around, we want to fix the reference. Fix the reference. So wherever we copy this formula to, the reference is fixed. It's absolute. That's what it's called. It's an absolute reference. So with D7, I'm going to hit the F4 key. And with, yeah, just with D7. So we're going to fix D7, which is the total payout. Okay. That's accurate. Holding down the shift key and right arrow, control R, auto filling across, and we can see this looks accurate. At least it's accurate for spring dividend. We're going to see in a second, it's going to get more challenging. So there we go, using absolute references, hitting the F4 key. You can type in these references manually if you wish to do that. Okay, I'm going to auto fill down. Can you see what's going to happen here? Control D on the Windows PC. Whoa, what's happened? Where have all these hashtags come from? And I'm just checking through the formulae. Can you see where that red highlighted cell is? It's not in the right place, is it? So we've got our absolute references. It seems to be accurate, but we need to do more. Now I'm going to introduce you to partial absolute references, partial absolute references. What we actually want to do is for the total to pay out, we just want to fix the column reference. We don't want to fix the row reference. Uh, for the percentage, we want to fix the row reference, but not the col column reference. Don't worry. I'm going to try to explain it now. Just hit the F4 key and get used to toggling through the different options here. We've got relative reference, so no dollar signs, full absolute references. So that's going to fix that's going to fix the column and the row. Then we have these partial absolute references. This option here is going to fix the column, but not the row. This is what we want. And then we're going to click into E6 again. Just get used to it. Just toggle through the options, hitting the F4 key on the Windows PC. This is the option we want. If we've got the dollar sign to the left of the number and then no dollar sign to the left of the letter, this is going to fix the row and not the column. Yes, this is a partial absolute reference. Very useful in this situation where we've got a table set up. We're looking to populate the table with formulae. Hitting enter here, control R and then control D and have our partial references in Excel formula building work, hitting the F2 key and the visuals, the colors are supporting us there. And I can see everything seems to be working here. So what about these formula building tips? Go ahead, don't forget about the Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out all for you. It's gonna simplify your Excel learning. A nice one page PDF. The next video to watch is in the pinned comment below this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.